Hello and welcome to ANC Decides, the show that gives you up-to-the-minute reports, commentary and analysis building up to the ANC's December elective conference. I'm your host, Mfundo Mabalan. Let's take a look at your top stories. ANC presidential candidate Matthews Posa makes serious allegations against Pumalanga chairperson David Mabuza. Pumalanga PC dismisses claims that is an act of desperation. Mpumalanga sets the record straight on the disputed unity nominations. Provincial leaders say branch members are encouraged to persuade each other on preferred leadership candidates. And Free State Provincial Executive Committee gears up for the Provincial Elective Conference. Branches have been given until this weekend to conclude the outstanding nomination process. The ANC in Bumalanga has responded to shocking allegations made by ANC presidential hopeful Matthews Posa against Premier David Mabuza. The former Bumalanga ANC chairperson claims branch members are intimidated to tow Mabuza's line. The Bumalanga ANC leadership has dismissed Posa's allegations as a desperate attempt to revive a stillborn presidential campaign. The video on which Posa bases his allegations is said to have been taken long before the nomination's process. Posa claims that Mabuza used his private army to intimidate branches to make the so-called unity nominations. He further claims that he lost 400 delegates due to intimidation. However, the provincial leadership says Didi Mabuza is a law-abiding citizen and Posa's claims are outrageous. Meanwhile, the timing of Posa's claims raises questions about an attempt to sway the ANC succession race. We want to assure members of this and supporters of the ANC that the process of the 54th National Conference administered by the PEC was credible and free of violence and intimidation. The PEC and the Dispute Committee of the National Executive Committee attended to all disputes lodged consistent with the guidelines of the 54th National Conference. Mr. Porsa, or those who he claimed to represent, seem not to have properly read and understand the guidelines as a result, did not submit a formal dispute with the PEC and chose to submit it on ENCA, SAPC News, and of course, the courts. As the PEC, we are confident that the process of BGM's ran was meticulous and can pass any legal test. The fact of the matter is, why can't they come forward? and said they they want to deal about this thing they want to be transparent let them open the box so that we can see what is inside there i'm talking about those box where we have deposited the nomination forms let them open the man you are talking about he managed to grab the mic on the chairperson of that day and instead they said they want they chase away the media people why are they chasing them away it is because of they are afraid that they are not correct they are corrupt we want to deal about this corruption in the ANC as well as in the On government. On that day, they were surprised by the visit of the MKMVA at home uh, because uh, what happened, they were coming from a conference and according to them, they came to uh, acknowledge the house that they used to uh, use as a camp when there was a friction between the IFP and the ANC in Ermelo in 1990 of which out of excitement I took the video and then because uh, it was at home I did not see any harm to that and then I would like to quote what I wrote on the Facebook uh, it was today's situation this is why I won't leave the ANC me and these guys sacrificed a lot for this country these M MKMVA soldiers are true to the party and always be although they are the pure purest but they still humble themselves and are the vanguard of the party. They remind me of the year 1990 when they trained and guided me on how to protect those who cannot protect themselves. This is what I wrote, but I was so amazed to see that the extraction, it was only for the video itself, but not the total uh, uh, situation of what happened on that day. We are requesting uh, Comrade Posa to please follow the right the, and the procedure of the ANC and uh, stop any uh, utterances that are not going to be uh, seen as, uh, 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 that are not going to be 
uh, good to ourselves as MKMVA. So we are really much shocked about him. We recognize him as our leader. Uh, we still love him. Let him come back and sit uh, down with us so that we talk this. Uh, if there, were, there are differences that he's having, he must come and clear uh, those differences with us. So for the event that took place, uh, the event took place before all the PGMs took, took place. So now he's linking the event that is on the footage with uh, the PGMs. And the, 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 the footage was taken long before, as the comrade has already said. They are very serious allegations, and they need to be responded to. Uh, it is evident from the video that the people who were there were engaged in what you may call illegal activities. Uh, it, is, it would have been important for Metiposa in making the, those allegations to approach the, co uh, the police and indicate that uh, I have a video and the video shows an act of, of illegality and criminality. And I also know a person who is behind this and then provide the issue of evidence. In the absence of that, there's not much that can be done. We now cross over to our reporter, Natasha Piri, who's out in Bumalanga. Natasha, a warm welcome to you. Now, we've all just heard from uh, the originators of, of that video, the, the gentleman who claims that that was his home. But I'd just like to know from you, what is the response of the ANC pertaining to that video, nevertheless? Because we always hear the ANC talk of high discipline and high morale, but we all know that uh, if you're going to be toting guns, it's illegal. You cannot be firing in the air. It's also reckless because somebody could die in that jovial spirit. So I don't think they'd want to associate themselves with that. What has been the response from the ANC in Pumala? Well, definitely, Mfuno, that, that is the exact same question that actually raised uh, to the leadership there. And the MKVA actually said that uh, when actually celebrating and firing these gunshots, uh, these were actually blank, uh, you know, gunshots that they shot. So uh, they furthermore did apologize, uh, you know, uh, to the public, the general public, saying that if they uh, indeed caused any harm, they apologize for that. But uh, putting it out on record, saying that no harm was caused as they fired blanks. We also heard from Makosin Yende, who ex actually explained everything is the originator of the video saying that the MKVA had actually came to his current house where he lives and that house was actually used uh, as an MKVA base back in the apartheid era and um, theirs was just to actually you know pay homage and tribute uh, to a camp that they once used. They also said that uh, you know this footage was actually taken on the 2nd of September and the BGMs had actually started on the 22nd of October so uh, just saying that these, these rumors or the allegations are made by Matthews Paws were actually malicious and he was trying to link an event that happened in September to a one that happened in October but also cautioned the media to actually check their facts, uh, you know, before publishing uh, any such information. We're actually joined by three very interesting guests, a political analyst, SACP leader in the province, an ANC leader in the province. We'll actually start off with Obama Mbuso, who's our political analyst. What do you make of such allegations uh, made against uh, Odidi Mabuza? Well, uh, we need to first check where they're coming from and the, and the motive behind such allegations. It is, it is, it, it'll be interesting to establish the exact reason why uh, such allegations are made. But we are not able to tell exactly the reason why such allegations are made. Where we are, we can only say we can give space and development to this entire allegation and see what comes out of it. Let's allow the process to unfold. Let's allow relevant authorities uh, you know, to take cause, run their own programs, carry out investigations. Going forward, then we'll wait for the results and see what happens. Thank you so much, Musa, saying that let's allow the process to actually unfold. Mum Patience, let me just bring you uh, into the pictures. The SACP, are you of the view uh, of the ANC as well, refuting these allegations, saying that Uba Post is actually trying to link an incident that happened in September to one that happened in October? Uh, as SACP, we believe that allegation remains allegations until they are concluded. So, so for us, for now, we'll say those are allegations because we don't have facts and we believe on in, in facts as a party. Let's take this conversation to last but not least, the ANC member, ANC leader in the province, Umam Njali uh, Njali. You've heard what Ubab Posa had to say against Ubab Didi Mabuza, the PEC coming out strongly saying that these are unfounded allegations, these are very malicious allegations. You've condemned this. What is your view of now? Are you going to take legal action against Ubab Posa? 
I don't think as the ANC will take legal actions. Remember, when we go to conferences, there's different views. People are interested in contesting the position. So we're saying contest it freely. Don't do character assassination. Let the province and its leadership lead the entire delegation to conference of the ANC. Allegations will remain allegations, but I know that uh, your, your security uh, uh, clusters in terms of their IT guys and so forth, they can verify when was that video taken, if it's exactly the date to say it's clashing with the PGMs, but where we're standing, it has long happened. It has long passed that matter. So we're saying to Mr. Posa, he must refrain from doing such. Let's raise issues when we've got facts. But for now as the ANC, we're saying it remains allegations. If there's any proof, then the matters can be taken forward. But for now, those are malicious. I'm telling you, there's also another argument saying that Uba Posa actually didn't follow uh, the ANC guidelines. He was supposed to lodge a complaint 40 hours, uh, 48 hours afterwards. That's there's right. also a complaint saying that his BGM didn't, actually didn't even sit because they didn't even reach a benchmark just, for sitting. Just a simple matter. Where do you launch a dispute? You start by the regional office mm. and then you take it to the provincial office. That's, that's procedure. So when you go and dispute on the media, what, what structure is the media? Mm. Our offices are here in Eshanzeni. We've got a regional office, we've got a provincial office. We would have wished if he was in that meeting, that was disrupted. Report it immediately, not wait for the PGC, and then you start talking about the branch general meetings. Because it was long closed by the time we went for PGC. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you uh, to all my guests for their time. Unfortunately, we're going to have to cut it short there, but you've heard everything that the ANC in the province had, had to say, uh, refuting these allegations. Also, uh, just reiterating the fact that, uh, you know, uh, Uba Posa did not follow the actual guidelines, but as for legal action, they are not going to take a legal action. Back to mm -hmm. you, Fundo. No, thank you very much to Natasha Piri, our ANN7 reporter, who's out in Bombela today. Now, today in studio, we're joined by political analyst Kim Heller, as well as Professor Begim Gomezulu via Skype. To the both of you, welcome. Thank you. Now, Kim, perhaps to start with you, it seems just watching those clips, uh, the Mpumalanga leadership is confining itself to that video and the legitimacy, or at least the timing when it was taken, etc. But beyond this, there are damning allegations from the presidential hopeful. He's talking of intimidation across the board. He's talking of manipulation. He goes on to, to I quote, that uh, Mr. David Mabuza is a village boy who's trying to cheat the system by getting double votes for himself. So if we just confine ourselves to those allegations broadly, what is your take? Well, I think it's very unfortunate, and I think as we head into the last few days of the um, pre-election um, era, I think we need to look out for reckless media reports, uh, because when you look at the facts that are emerging from the province, from the people on the ground who were there, not us speculating in Johannesburg or elsewhere, we are seeing that there's, no, uh, there's some incongruence between when the video happened and uh, the timing that's being presented. So I think we need to be, be careful. You used the word reckless earlier, which I think perhaps is the theme of what has happened in Pumalanga. Mm. And, uh, I th and what's become, what is clear as well is that Matthew Posa did not follow the due processes. And that does beg some questions. You know, it's, it's quite unfortunate as we're leading into, the, into this, uh, the last few days. I quote uh, Charles Dickens from his um, analysis of his, his book on the French Revolution. He said it, it's, it was the best of times and the worst of times. And what should actually be the best of times and a celebration for the ANC now is turning into a horror show of self-mutilation where the ANC uh, in that province and elsewhere are tearing each other apart. And uh, as far as, um, you know, we obviously need to condemn any act of intimidation and any act of violence. But at the same time, I think the, the attack from uh, Matthew Pozza was quite violent in its own right because he's, he's what I would call his verbal assault mm. on the Premier, uh, which was obviously intended to, to hurt the Premier and injure him, I think is uh, actually a, uh, a backstab of the whole um, inclination of that province uh, and the will of that province to go behind a unity um, unity slate mm. and by injuring the premier of the of the uh, province he's actually injuring the province itself and possibly uh, uh, ANC nationally uh, and that's that's very disappointing I mean if you look at the work that the premier has done in the last few years he's built up 
support, he solidified support, he cemented support for the ANC, and that is reflected in the huge increase in mm -hmm. voting numbers. Mm -hmm. So to insult him, and also to insult him as a, as a villager, I'm not sure what that means. I think the, uh, we're getting into an ugly spate of mm -hmm. personal insults, which mm -hmm. should have no place in this conference. Mm -hmm. And then Professor Gomez Zulu, your take on those allegations? Uh, let me start off by saying that uh, desperate times call for desperate measures. Mm. Uh, I think that uh, Matthew Posa, at the moment, it is clear that uh, he will not achieve whatever goal that he had in mind when he started uh, availing himself for the presidency. That is point number one. Point number two, I think that he's playing a dangerous game. Uh, in the first instance, if my memory serves me well, Matthew Posa is a lawyer by profession. If that is true, then it means that he might have forgotten some of the stuff he read when he was still studying for law. Because if, uh, for example, it is true that uh, uh, David Mabuza, the premier of Mpumalanga, uh, is in fact um, a thug, because that is the implication being created here. If it is true that is a thug, then it means that uh, did you, uh, I mean, uh, Matthew Posa has two options. One, he has to focus on the ANC uh, BGM. If he has a problem with the ANC BGM, there are processes in place. If you are not happy about the process and you feel there is something untoward that happened, there are time frames within which you can launch a formal complaint. That is one route. But then if it is true that uh, uh, the people shown in the video are Mabuz, mm -hmm. oh, yes, yes, then you must take the legal process. But Apologies, we seem to, to have lost uh, Professor there, that audio not so particularly audible. But Kim, another thing, or at least one thing that uh, Matthews Porsa went on to state was that the reason he didn't follow the processes is because he didn't feel that some of his views would find expression perhaps among the PEC members. I mean, we saw them there. Uh, they're not particularly impressed with him. So one then wonders that if he had approached them, would they have listened or given him the ear? in some of these complaints. What's your take there? Well, I think we have to look at his timing. And I think we also need to look closely at the character and, um, and the conduct of all the presidential cam campaigners over this time. And who has run a clean campaign? Who has run a positive campaign? And who has run a, a factional campaign? And if we look, and I'm sorry to say this, but if we look at uh, Paul's campaign, he has focused on the negatives, both of... Um, other presidential candidates and of the ANC itself. And that to me is very factional and very uh, negative. And it, rather than um, focusing and, and uh, showcasing his own virtues and his own offering, he seems to be concentrating on the vices of uh, the ANC, the imagined or, or real vices of the If they of exist, the ANC. what happens then? Some people could say, yes, he's a negative man. Some could possibly say he's a realist. He's talking it as he sees it, that he feels if I express what is the problem within the ANC, then we can begin to resolve it. What happens to people like that that say we must highlight our problems? It's acknowledging them that will help us resolve them. Well, I think the issue is not that um, problems cannot be raised in the ANC. And in fact, the ANC, I think, gives a lot of space to descenders within its ranks. But we have to question why he's made this so visible. I think there's a, there's a proverb that says, um, uh, a, a fight amongst grasshoppers is a feast to the crow. Mm. So all, we do, all the NC is doing now is, is giving a splendor of opportunity to its, op its opposition. So why are people within the leadership acting more like opposition leaders? And certainly a man of his caliber and experience should know that there are structures in place and procedures in place to lodge disputes. Well, from that division on to the unity conversation, now Pumalanga has sought to shed light on what the disputed unity nominations mean. This comes after Posa threatened legal action over what he calls unity being imposed on branches. The Pumalanga Provincial Executive Committee says leadership choices are not imposed on branches. The provincial top structures say branch members are encouraged to persuade each other on the leadership choices. The clarification comes amid speculation that the nominations could be a vote bank for a particular candidate. Meanwhile, ANC Secretary General Gwedeman Tashe says delegates will have to be specific on the ballot paper. This raises questions about when Mpumalanga will eventually show its hand in the succession race. The ANC in the province has long started uh, to the unity that we are talking about today. Uh, we have seen the chairperson through the PEC 
uh, trying to bring everyone together, the alliance and everyone. We said we're going to wait for the processes of the BGM to unfold and then after we'll be able to try and persuade uh, one another based on the outcome of our PGCs. So you will understand that in our previous, in our PGC, there was a nomination of uh, 223 where our branches nominated a uh, unit. At no point in time where the PEC as a structure uh, process a matter and say, now that we're going to start uh, our PGM, this is what we want to tell our branches to go and nominate. It has never happened that way. People must start respecting members of the ANC. They know very well the processes of the ANC. And they know, in fact, the secretary of the branch is the administrator of the PGM. The deploy will come with the package with nomination form of candidate, nomination form of delegates, and the attendance register. So the branch secretary runs the process of the BGM. So there's no way that the branch secretary with the package w will be told by any person. Uh, in fact, we're not going to uh, the conference for the first time. We have been going to different conferences. So our branches, they know the processes and what is expected from them. Now let's hear what ordinary members say about contested unity nominations. No, as the uh, ANC Women's League, we have a position. We said as the uh, PEC, uh, together with uh, some de uh, RC delegates here, and we nominate uh, Dr. Nkosa Zanathamini Zuma as the one. And we are saying that we are ready as Women's League uh, to be led by a woman. That is why we have uh, uh, nominated Dr. Nkosa Zanathamini Zuma. Uh, well, that is, that is our thinking that probably the branches of the African National Congress came to the realization that the African National Congress is no longer in a good state and that the ANC probably is in the brink of collapse and that if the ANC continues to use the same route going to national conferences of electing leadership uh, which divides the ANC and finds the ANC and, and, and actually uh, at a point finds the ANC wanting that is not the correct route that the NC must continue with. The unit, the election, uh, take it as a uh, abstention. But uh, what was the what the ANC in Pumalanga was trying is that uh, they must continue with the unit because we also continue to lobby other other provinces. It's difficult to lobby a person when they when you show him the stance where you are because uh, we also agree that uh, uh, the NS, SMKMVA, because we have, we have pronounced ourselves in our national conference that we are supporting the NTZ. And we also continue that we are supporting the NTZ. Now, Professor Mgomez Zulu, on to this unity conundrum. It seems the Secretary General, Gwede Mantasha, went on to explain or clarify. He said there will be no unity uh, on the ballot box, so people have got to vote for their preferred candidates. But it seems the Mpumalanga ANC maintains that this route that they have taken with their 223 abstentions or unity nominations was a good one. No, in the context... in. Uh, like the explanation we just received right now, they are not necessarily saying that uh, this is uh, how they are going to vote at the, at the conference in Nazareth. Basically, they are saying that in the meantime, because lobbying is still underway, then that this is a strategy they've come up with. We all agree that this is unprecedented, but then given the context, they, 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 should, they should be afforded the opportunity uh, to do what they want to do. But then come the time, uh, the, closing, uh, the, the closing time, then they should then indicate who exactly do they support uh, with the 223 uh, branches. But I, I don't think that, uh, for, for example, um, Didi, I mean, um, Matthew Posa has a problem with that per se, because the only time he said it was when he claimed that uh, he lost 408 votes. Where he got them from, only him knows, uh, because he claims that... Uh, had this unity not been included in the ballot, he would have uh, pocketed 408 delegates. So I, I don't know where he got that from. But even if that were to be true, then does it necessarily mean that uh, the people in, the, in Pumalanga and in the branches share his sentiments? If the answer is no, then it means that even if he claims these numbers, he can claim 1,000 for God's sake, but then come the time at, the, at Nazareth, no one is going to vote for him, more especially because he has proved that... Uh, 
He's the kind of a leader who cannot be trusted. How do you lead the nation if you cannot follow the processes of your own political party? How are you going to follow the constitution? How are you going to lead South Africa? You mm -hmm. first have to respect yourself, and then people will respect you in return. Mm -hmm. Now, Professor, I mean, Kim, rather, let me come back to you, Kim. I prefer now, Professor. <laughs> let's, we'll give it to you for today. Now, Kim, for me, when they talk about being open mm -hmm. to persuasion, the Mpumalanga ANC at this point. Has that process to persuade each other not come and gone? That at this point you were supposed to have expressed who your preferred candidate is. So it means in essence, are they not getting more time here? Were they saying we can go to the conference and still be open for persuasion in, in, to, to, to some extent? Is that what it is? That they're going to be persuaded there? Mm -hmm. Well, I worry about the term persuasion, because what is that? Is that actually coercion? Is it the management of their vote? Is it the imposition of a particular candidate? I think I've said it before, hands off delegates. Let us make sure that, um, I think uh, Dr. Domini Zuma said today in a media report, that the conference needs to be a safe place for all delegates. And let us all honor that. Let us make sure that the delegates are able to vote for whoever they want. Uh, the process of persuasion, people can speak to them, but at the end of the day, that it, the vote remains theirs. I don't think they need to decide beforehand. They can decide when they get into the ballot, uh, in the voting booth. Mm -hmm. So what was, the what was the point, though, of having a nominations process if they're going to uh, decide on the, on the final day? Well, if they carry the mandate of the branch, what does that really mean? Because we are not sure what the unity vote means at this stage. Is it a protest vote, it, which could be against their premier? It could be against imposition? It could be against um, either of the forerunners? We don't know what that means. Hmm. No, it's an interesting one. It remains that conundrum for the rest of us. But I take it that at some point, the Mpumalanga ANC will reveal its cards. And that's where we leave it for today. Until next time.